Let me show you the top 10 features you must know about in the Power BI desktop update so far in 2020. And if you hang out with me today, here's what you're going to learn, my friend. You're going to see the feature which makes it easier to refresh large data sets or data sets over slow connections. Oh my God, your life is going to be so much easier now with this feature. You're going to see something which takes the good old slicer to a whole new level. And we have a feature which leaves bookmarks in dust. If you loved bookmarks, well, you're going to love this even more. And we have something which is going to help you get rid of the annoyingly small eight point font size forever and more. So all that is coming up. So stay tuned, my friends. So this is our Power BI 2020 Q1 update. And we're going to cover three months. Uh, January was a was there was no update. So we have for you December 2019. February 2020 and March 2020 in this quarterly update. Let's get things started with number 10. But hey, I'm being rude. I should say hello. I'm Avi Singh, Microsoft MVP and best-selling Power BI author. And if you want to become a Power BI Pro, make sure to subscribe. And yes, click that bell so you are notified whenever I go live to answer your questions. Power BI questions. You know I love doing that. Now we also have a month by month playlist covering all of the desktop updates and their key features so you can catch up on anything you might have missed really, really quick. And we're going to put the link in the corner and down in the description below. Now the top 10 features we're going to cover today, uh, we are also going to put links in the description so you can get a lot more details about these features if you are interested. And a friendly trip tip from us. If you're watching this video on your mobile device, and then you can tap the video title to view the description. They just, you know, don't make it easy for you, do they? All right, so let's get going. Number 10 is multi-column sort for tables. And let's see this in action in Power BI. So here we have our model, a table, and it's sorted by sales. And I could uh, sort it by country, let's say. But now what you can do is you can hold down the shift button. So you can't see it, but I'm holding down the shift button and click on another column. So watch what happens. So now it's sorted by country and then by occupation. How cool is that? So that is at number 10, number 10 multi-column sort for tables. At number nine, we have setting a column as a custom URL. Now I must say these features don't sound as exciting as as they are. They are pretty cool. Number nine is pretty cool. So let me show you how was the thing, how were things before. So here you could uh, have a column linked as a URL. As you can see, I have linked this as a URL. But you know, sometimes I don't want to show that ugly URL. Who cares about the URL? I mean, I, I could turn it into an icon. But instead, I don't even want to show this field. I just want to link the name of the country to the URL that I have stored. And you can do that now, which is exactly what I've done right here. So you can see if I click this, oh, well, it open a different screen, but you get the idea. So that URL opens. So let me see if I can show you really quick how that's done. And I'll link to the video with more details on it. So that one, uh, the field, if you go into size and I just search for URL, and there's the setting. You set it to a web URL and you select the URL that you would like to be shown. So that's uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty awesome feature, I think. And again, we're going to link to a video in the description where you can get more detail about using this feature if you need to. Let's keep moving on to number eight, new DAX functions. Hey, it's always a party when new DAX functions get introduced. And this time we have three. We have coalesce and we have first non-blank value and last non-blank value coalesce. For those who come from SQL background, they're pretty familiar with this function. And essentially it's a more elegant way to do something like this. So earlier you would say, oh, if this is blank, then use that, otherwise use this. And coalesce just makes it look a lot more elegant. And you can also use this for multiple values. So you can say coalesce, actual sales, rejected sales, zero. So check this, if that's non-blank, show that, else move on. So, um, so yeah, so more elegant way to show that. What about these ones? I will say that this uh, got me for a spin a little bit. I'm like, oh, what's the difference here? Well, let me show you what's the difference here. Now, they do look similar. And we're just going to look at one, the first non-blank, uh, first non-blank and its cousin, first non-blank value. And the syntax looks similar. And you would use it in a similar manner as we have here, first non-blank customer column and sales. But let's see this in action. So here we have customer and sales. Now, for the first non-blank, it returns 
the column, right? So it returns this part. So it scans for uh, scans the column for where the first non-blank sales value is found. It finds that, but then this guy returns the column value. Whereas the next one, you probably guessed it, returns the value of the measure. So that's the difference. And again, it gives you it gives you a lot more flexibility. So I think that's a welcome addition. Now, hey, just a reminder that a lot of this awesome stuff is coming up. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch that remote. Stay right here, my friend. And hey, uh, one a shout out to our number one ranked Power BI tutorial. So if you're just getting started or keep getting stuck in Power BI, then make sure to check out our tutorial. Uh, we're gonna link to it in the corner and down in the description as well. For number seven, we have updates to new ribbon. And the actual updates are pretty minor, but I must say I had to call it out because I'm so in love with the new ribbon. So the new updates mostly are around these small icons, which make it similar to how the Excel interface is. And there's also some uh, keyboard navigation. As you can see, uh, I can use my keyboard and keyboard keys to kind of navigate through this, which makes it uh, uh, more accessible as well. So cool features, but overall, as I said, I'm kind of in love with the new ribbon and I love the direction it's going in where they're, they're kind of making it pretty similar to Excel, which is a great interface and makes it easier for us to go back and forth across tools. So hey, if you love the new ribbon, then uh, give a shout out to the Power BI team in the comments down below. Number six is the enhanced data set metadata. As I said before, these uh, features, sometimes they, they don't sound as exciting. It's like, wow, what, what, that, what is that? It's gonna put me to sleep, but trust me, this is exciting stuff and I'm really truly excited about this stuff. So what is this about? So the BBIX file that so far that has been stored, its structure was not similar to SSAS tabular, which is the, the big cousin of uh, Power BI desktop files. But now with this feature, you can make that structure to be similar to that. What does that give you? That essentially gives you portability between Power BI desktop and SSAS tabular. Now, if for those who may have worked with this using Power Pivot models, they remember that the portability between Power Pivot and SSAS tabular, where you could just right click in SSAS and say I want to import a power pivot model in in my SSAS tabular now for those folks who have no idea what SSAS tabular is really this is the distinction and so business users typically are going to be working with power bi desktop whereas IT works in, in bigger systems and they use different tools SSAS tabular but earlier when the dynamic was this business versus IT and they were fight with each other and you know, try to control each other and all of that stuff. Nobody was happy. But Power BI is really showing the way of how these two units, which are part of the same company and have the same goals, can really work together. So again, kind of a small shift here, small feature, if you will. But, uh, you know, one of those things where, uh, uh, you know, giant step for mankind, right? So that's what's going on here. So that's number six, enhanced data set metadata. And again, we can link to, uh, in the description where you can get more details about that. Number five is dual access for line charts. And this was a long requested feature, I understand. And uh, so earlier, if you did a line chart and you had two values which were widely apart, as we have in this case, you can see, we have the sales, which is in thousands and <laughs> purchasing customer count, which is much smaller. And the smaller line is pretty much flat line down at the bottom, pretty useless, can't do anything about it. But now what you have is a second Y axis well here. Actually, let me select that second visual. All right, so there you go. So you can have sales on one Y axis and you can have another measure on the different dual axis and you can see the, the results are so much better, right? So it's not a flat line anymore. So that is number five, dual axis for the line chart. And we are in for the good stuff now. So the next feature is what's gonna help you get rid of the annoyingly small eight point size forever and drum roll the feature is theming update so this is what i'm talking about okay i kind of exaggerated slightly i realize it's not eight point font maybe i think it used to be but now it's 10 point font it's often still small and i often don't like starting off as that well you can change that default now very easily by going to the view menu and going in here and selecting customize current theme and there are lots and lots of options here so i was just kind of kidding around changing the text you can actually change a lot of different things really easy now this was something which was really tricky to do earlier but now of course with this preview feature it's really super easy by the way just a general reminder for any preview feature this being one of them you have to turn it on in the option settings you're probably familiar by that for now. All right, so here we can say text general and I can just 
increase that to something larger and watch what happens to this table. It gets much bigger, but n that's not it. Uh, the, the best part is that even if you build a new table, it's going to have these settings. So you're not, not going to have to change it again and again. So certainly I love this feature makes uh, changing teams very accessible and uh, we're going to link to that in the corner as well where you can get more information about this feature. So number three, this is something which is the better than bookmarks. You're like, what are you talking about? I mean, what can be better than bookmarks? Well, it's certainly an improvement. And what we have is new action types for buttons. So uh, it lets you do what you could do using bookmarks, but it just makes it a lot easier to do this and a lot faster. And hey, we love fast, right? So let me show you how this is set up. So here, uh, let me show you how it's kind of working. So here we have uh, uh, some sample report with navigation and, and somebody can click on category two and go to that page. And what it's basically doing is down at the bottom, you can see it's navigating to these different pages, three ABC, and I can click around at three and that's taken me to uh, this page and of course I can click back and forth All right so that's how it's set up and you could do this earlier with bookmarks but now if I go to one of these buttons and I'm going to show you the value which is all about action isn't it so uh, you can link and there are new selections here you can do you can do page navigation there's actually a drill through option here as well which is also pretty cool but uh, so yeah so it just makes it a little bit faster than bookmarks so that's uh, you know definitely you should check it out and hey we're going to leave a link in the description where you can find more details about that if you like so what can be better than bread well sliced bread but what can be better than slicers? <laughs> well, let's take a look at that. So this takes slicer to a whole new level, and this is a number two, two feature, which is hierarchical slicer. Try saying that five times fast. So this was available as a custom visual, but I don't know if you're like me, but I like I like staying with the standard visuals. You know, it's 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 a little more comforting. So here we have a, a regular good old slicer, but you don't realize that it's now on steroids. So it's just a regular good old slicer, but earlier you can only add one value in the field well over here. But now let me go back and watch what happens to the slicer right here. So as uh, as I add more value. So here what I'm going to go is add country and watch what happens to the slicer. It automatically changes to a hi hierarchical slicer and I can do more. I can bring in kind of region and now even that expands and I can make selections at any level. So I can select e either the whole United States or I can go in there and just select a few. Uh, and yeah, it really works well. You can also use the control mouse click uh, to have different selections and so forth. So that is our number two feature. What do you think about that, guys? That's pretty cool. And we are on to our number one feature, which is gonna make it easier for you to refresh large data sets or if you have data sets which are over slow connections. Now before that, another shout out to our monthly updates highlights playlist where you can catch up on all of the Power BI monthly updates which you might have missed or want to just refresh what was covered, the top features that were covered in the prior monthly updates, and of course our number one ranked Power BI tutorial. So links are in the corner and down in the description, so go check it out. And now let's move on to a number one feature which is incremental refresh now this was available but only with a premium license and now it's generally available with the pro license and that is a huge win so what is incremental refresh about so let's say this is our sales table and it has uh, many years worth of data now with the refresh every time you refresh it's going to pull in all of that data but the thing is that most of the time uh, most of the time the historical data doesn't really change and that's where incremental refresh is a lot smarter the way you can set it up is you can say hey all of the old data that's not going to update every time so just pull it in once and then don't touch it you don't have to touch it at all and when you do a refresh just do an incremental refresh and just bring in the current year and just refresh that part now of course this is very flexible so you can change it to say only refresh the current month before that just leave it as is or current week or current day uh, so we're going to put a link in the description down below where you can uh, or, or uh, uh, and where you can find more details about this feature. So those were the top 10 features for Power BI Update 2020 in the quarter one so far. What do you think about it? Which one was your favorite? Do you think we got it right? Do you think we got it wrong? Um, were there something that we missed? 
or are there features that you would like to see in Power BI which are still missing? We would love to hear about that from you, so leave a comment and let us know. Keep watching our next videos and make sure to subscribe and click that bell. And I'll see you next time. Until then, power on, my friend.